Alright, what's up y'all? Uh, my name is Danny, aka Dane. Uh, this is the first episode, that's why we're still figuring all this shit out. Uh, this is the first episode of Dane's Dabalicious uh, Discourse. I don't know. Uh, yeah. uh, my co-host. My name's Hari. Uh, I'm the constant co-host of this channel, and we're basically out here because we have been taking dabs for about as long as... We can think now at this point out here. Uh, it's been about uh, four or five years for me. I think about three or four yeah, about years. About three for or you. four years for myself, and yep. it's about time that we just start really bringing this like dab journey and the the way that dabs impact us and our lives and the different like scope of this whole product uh, to the world out there because there's nobody doing this. Like we need to start talking about dabs, and we need to start talking about dabs now because this is the future. This this is this is the way that people are going to be going about this just all the time in the immediate future, so. Yeah, I don't know how many of you out there are stoners. I think, obviously, if you're watching this, you're probably at least familiar with some smoking types. Um, I've been smoking for a long time, uh, a little bit longer than I've been dabbing, but I pretty quickly moved over to dabbing just because it was cleaner, it was cheaper. I mean, there's a lot of really good benefits to just using concentrates uh, in a lot of different ways. And my and, story is, like, yeah. exactly the same, where I switched over to concentrates, like, pretty quickly after I started smoking, because after doing the research, you realize pretty fast, this is just, it's the cleanest way, it's the most efficient way, it's probably one of the ways that makes you feel the best afterwards as well, and I think that's a really important factor that we're going to get into with a lot of the dabs that we take on this channel, is just how they make you feel from beginning to end, and that's, like, a super important part of evaluating the stoner lifestyle, so... And well, that's not to mention um, the complexity that you can get in both effect and mm -hmm. flavor and consistency. I mean, everything is just, it's more concentrated in a concentrate. And, uh, you know, there, there are a couple places out there that do weed reviews and they have a good database of maybe flour or things like that. But we're really, again, just trying to hone in on, like, what really makes dabs that much better and what makes them different. Um, really just doing an in-depth analysis of this kind of thing because we think we think it's really interesting uh, we hope that you guys really think it's interesting and more often than not I think it's gonna be pretty fucking hilarious how we talk about it because we're getting high in front of you we're, we're testing them in front of you we're exactly we're testing this product that you're gonna be able to go buy and go be able to try and hopefully make better through these reviews and just watching this yeah being a part of the community yep. so with that sit back relax and enjoy the show we're here to bring you the best dab content possible it's just gonna be us, uh, maybe some other people eventually on here, and we'll just be smoking dabs, giving you our honest reviews and thoughts, and bringing you what's what's best every week. Oh, and I almost forgot to mention our location. True. Some of you may notice that this is not a normal studio. This is not, uh, you know, a nice closeted area. This isn't, exactly. this isn't behind glass or anything. We have a tarp behind us. Uh, this is actually attached to an easy up, and we're actually in the middle of the fucking woods. Because this is this is the classic spot. This is where we came to enjoy ourselves when you know there wasn't anywhere else that was very accepting of this type of thing. A lot of people, uh, in my family at least, uh, they're big drinkers. Uh, they love their alcohol and things like that. And I don't think there's anything wrong with that. I think everyone has their own vice and their own way of relaxing and things like that. As long as you keep it under control, that's that. But uh, a lot of places, a lot of uh, people don't accept weed. They don't accept THC because of a lot of the old stigmas. So this is where we came to have a safe place and honestly a fucking beautiful place to come to our thing. And at that, hopefully we can use this sanctuary to bring our sanctuary to you and expand this idea of how dabs and THC are really just a, an eye-opening experience. And once you really get into the, the details and the logistics of how dabbing and how all of this stuff works, you'll just... We, we hope to bring this, uh, the whole experience and the whole sanctuary of this great spot, the view, the feeling, just the experience of being here every day to all of you. So, Well, and hopefully we'll all learn something from this because I know I learned a lot when I got into dabbing, even from how much I knew about uh, marijuana. My background is actually in uh, cannabis sales. Uh, I'm currently doing wholesales uh, for cannabis, and so I'm pretty familiar with the market and a lot of the products. Um, but... Again, like we talked about, that's just, it's nothing compared to getting out here, getting your hands dirty, and just trying a lot of it. Like Exactly. You have to have this back end, so. And that's why yeah. we're here, so welcome to the journey. Let's get straight in there, why yeah, not? Let's yeah, do it. Let's uh, just... First things first, some people on here might not know how to dab. You're so right. They... Let's... <laughs> no, no better place to start than from the very beginning. Let's 
So I'm going to let Hari bring out some of the dabs and stuff. Uh, he's definitely going to pick out his first one because I'm making him. Um, <laughs> meanwhile, I'll explain to you a little bit uh, about the way that I got into dabbing. Um, so I used to go out to a place kind of like this. Uh, it was actually, it was a community, it's now a community center. Uh, back in the day, it was just an abandoned school. Uh, I promise we weren't doing this around kids. Um, but, uh, no, we go out there to a little bench, uh, out secluded area. Nobody would be able to come see us. But we'd have a lot of our friends come in and join us. So we'd have a lot of, uh, you know, different groups come in and join us. And at one point, we were all smoking flour at the time. We had uh, a guy come over with a big old dab rig. And he starts setting up, and he starts giving out dabs. And I just remember the first time I hit it, it was dirty. It wasn't done right. You know, it was, it was pretty gnarly. But... It was one of the best experiences of my life just because of what it made me think about and how it made me feel. And it was just all around a better version of what I'd had from the flower experience back in the day. And, you know, to that end, I had no idea what I was doing. So the guy did it for me. He did every single part of the dabbing experience for me. So we're going to show you a little bit. Starting from, yeah, oh. start. let's start from literally what the dab is, and you get these in like these little one gram, two gram, sometimes even little containers, and they vary in size a little bit, but generally speaking, they look pretty close to like this, and they come with a, a lid, and sometimes often also a package. And the package will contain all the information you need to identify your dab. So we'll start with this one right here. This one we have, I've selected out of Danny's case right here, it's a sativa, it's called Berry Pie, it's got 87.5% cannabinoids, 10% terpenes, 75% THC. We'll get into a little bit more of the breakdown on what a lot of the numbers mean, but generally speaking, dabs are very high in concentrated THC, and that is one of the things that makes them stand out the most in the industry, and thus, they will be extremely potent. So, yeah, we won't be taking very much. And Again, like, in terms of potency, some of you may not understand, like, most flour caps out. I think the highest percentage I've ever seen in my entire life was 45% oh, in wow. flour. And, like, and that's, that's really high. That's a lot. That's I a was, lot of percentage. Back in the, you know, a couple years ago, I think the highest that I would see is, like, 28, maybe 35%. And that's, like, really, really good quality. You can see crystals on there and everything. It's, it's very obvious that it's that high quality. This stuff, it starts at, I think the lowest I've ever seen a concentrate be is, if it's a THC concentrate, I think the lowest I've seen is like 60%. I saw 59% rosin once, actually, very recently. Okay, so, yeah, okay. So, yeah, 59% is considered quite low for for one of these one of these dabs. And we'll get into this a little bit later, but um, the actual percentages on things don't, they don't have quite as much of an exact bearing on the end result and effect and flavor yes. as some people like to think. Um... A lot of people like to see a high THC number, and that will get them the most high. That's definitely just not true. Um, a lot of people like to use terpenes because that's your, you know, your flavonoids. Yep. Uh, they like to use those as if there's a more, if there's a larger amount of those, then I'll get a better flavor out of it. That's not necessarily true, but. Yeah, lots of people also enjoy just going by the feel, and that's what we're going to start doing today, is we're going to really get into this podcast from the beginning to the end about how the dab just feels to us when we take it, because a lot of these percentages and stuff, while they may have some correlation, like Danny was saying, are not necessarily the end-all be-all, and we want to give you the most honest evaluation based on how we feel about taking the dabs, and that's where we're going to start. To even take the dab, though, you need this thing called a tool, and you take off a little bit of the dab on the tool, like you can see here on the end near my face. Uh, I personally like to use old dental tools. Um, they're really high quality. Uh, they don't break down, and they're meant to be in your mouth, uh, so they're food safe. And uh, sanitary. A and lot that's of... always a super important factor before I, I had to cut Danny off for this no, one. Yeah, yeah. you got to be sanitary about taking your dabs. Step number one, be safe, be sanitary. Yes, always be safe and sanitary. This is a huge step up from just lighting up a bowl or a joint or anything like that. You have to be... Quite frankly, you have to be pretty experienced uh, to get into this or be brought into it by somebody with a lot of experience so that you know how to do it right. And that's, again, part of why we're doing this. So. Exactly. And on that note, thank you, Danny, for getting me into this. Yeah, right? So let's let's move to the next <laughs> tool we've got. This, this is the torch. And this is quite a large torch, so I'm going to put this, I'm going to hand this over to Danny to explain to you, to have him explain to you why this is such a large torch while I get out my smaller one for a second. Okay, so this is a propane torch. This is not usually what you'd see used with dabs. Um, a lot of people don't like to use propane because it does leave a bit of a taste in your mouth. Mainly, the problem with these is that you're using camping propane or a lower quality propane. 
Um, I like to use the blue bottle. Uh, it doesn't seem to leave too much of an aftertaste, uh, and it seems to burn a little bit just more efficiently. I don't know if that's just my own placebo thing, but uh, the head on here is really what I'm interested in. So you can attach this head to any propane bottle. You can attach it to those Coleman ones. You can attach it to Burns-O-Matic, whatever. You can also attach this to map gas uh, to actually do glass blowing and things like that. Uh, I just use it to heat up my dab nail. And the reason why I do that is because it has a locking mechanism. So if I want to, this button won't press down. If I unlock it, I can press the button down and you can kind of hear there's a little bit of gas left in there. Um, this both sparks it and releases the gas when I hold it down. So it's just one fluid button press. And more importantly than anything, if I were to for some reason drop this or get really dangerous with it, it just turns off as soon as I let my hand go. And all of those safety features that Danny just discussed are also available on every butane torch, and this is the more standard use torch for taking dabs. And the reason for this is because it's a little bit less powerful, it's a lot more controllable, as we mentioned, it's extremely safe when compared to a lot of other just open flame type products. It has a safety on the inside over here, it has a little flame mechanism uh, to control how large the flame is, and it has, of course, the trigger, which is the same as the other trigger presented on the other torch. Now, why do we use a torch to heat up our to heat up our banger? What's a banger, you might even ask? So, let's get into the, the dynamic of the piece. Uh, so, this is our piece, and instead of having a normal, like, bowl-shaped adaptation up here, where you would expect, instead we have a banger. The banger is a quartz piece that is extremely heat-resistant, heats up to a very, very hot temperatures without breaking, without causing us any damage, and... Obviously, when it heats up to extremely hot temperatures, it gets really hot to the touch. So, step number one of using a banger, don't touch it. Yeah. Don't touch it. This is going out to all the bong smoke and flower people out there. I've seen this happen so many fucking times. I've done it myself. Don't Do not take it out. reach for the banger, okay? Get that out of your system. You don't want to be reaching for the bowl. You should, quite frankly, have a torch in one hand, the bong in the other, and then switch off when you put the torch down to pick up a tool. So you should always have bong and something else in that hand. You should never be using an extra hand to grab that hot banger. Yep. The and only time that we touch this is when we know that it's been, I mean, I'm thinking like four or five minutes. Is cooled usually, off completely. Yeah. All right. Well, without any further, further ado, we've been talking all about the stab. Let's take it. All right, so while Hara's heating up here, I'll explain a little bit more about uh, the bong and everything. I like to use a uh, small bong when I'm coming out here. Most of the time, I actually use a fairly large piece because I do like to milk my rips up in there. Uh, it just helps me kind of control when it gets to my throat. A lot of people like to use the smaller bangers, or the smaller bongs, I should say, because uh, it preserves the flavor. Uh, less air to go through means less uh, degradation of the flavonoids in that dab. So that means it's going to taste a lot better, and you're going to get that flavor a lot quicker and more consistently on each hit. So if you're just starting out, I do recommend a slightly smaller piece for dabs. It's both easier to handle, it's uh, not as easy to break, and it takes so much less water, especially when you're coming out to a place like this. Um, one more important thing about this, a lot of people like to use a 12 millimeter banger or a 14 millimeter banger. This is a slightly smaller one. This, I believe, is a 10 millimeter, um, maybe even an 8 or 9. Uh, so it won't fit with a lot of pieces, but what you may not know is if you already have a 14 millimeter bong, they're actually... Uh, bangers designed to go in there, so you should be totally fine if you just go to a store and say, hey, I have this piece, do you mind giving me a dab set up? And they should get you set up just fine. And while I'm taking this, I'm going to have Danny explain exactly what I'm doing here. Alright, so he just heated it up for about 60 seconds, uh, just until it gets about orange to red hot, and you want to do that fairly evenly. He then waited about 15 to 20 seconds, and then he drops the tool into the banger, into the bucket, and he's going to press it against the bottom piece and the side piece where he just heated it. What that does is it effectively vaporizes your concentrate. So the vaporized concentrate will go through your bong just like normal flower smoke, uh, and you'll blow out just <laughs> like he did. But it ends up being a very, very, very clean hit. The drawback is there's a bit of an effect that happens with concentrates that people aren't used to, uh, which is the lung muscle constriction effect. So what we'll do is... Unlike flour, where it'll irritate the inside of your lungs, and that's what makes you cough, dabs will actually constrict your muscles around your lungs. It almost makes it feel like you have a lesser lung capacity for a little bit. And what you'll want to do is actually cough it out a little bit, because I hate resisting coughs. Um, coughing actually opens up your lungs uh, in a different way to allow more of the THC in there. Uh, it's just, just cough. 
Okay, don't be a bitch Precisely. about it. Just cough. Yep. And Better oftentimes, reason. you'll only have to cough a little bit. Sometimes, if you rip your dab hotter, you might have to cough a little bit more. But definitely embrace the cough, because it's not good to harbor unhealthy hot smoke or things like that in your lungs. Your body has a natural reaction to cough. Just accept it. I've definitely seen a, accept it. I've seen a lot of people go for, they try to almost, they have a reaction to where they want to swallow the smoke, and that's the worst thing you can do, because that will make you throw up, it'll make you have a gag reflex, it'll just... It'll destroy your rib. That's how you cough for, like, 20 minutes. I've seen a lot of people resist it or, like... Uh, the other thing is, on the flip side, you don't want to, like, let yourself go into a coughing fit for too, too long. Or, if you do, get whatever you're trying to cough out. Because a lot of times, it's going to be, like, a little bit of phlegm or something. And you're just going to want to, like, get that out of your airway. So... And, yeah, here we have Danny also going for the same one. So, well, yeah, let's talk about what actually happened here. Let's talk about the effect on the stab, because, ah, the effect on the stab was just absolutely phenomenal. Um, when we're talking about, like, a, a berry strain, people tend to say that berry strains are a little bit more sativa, and this one definitely fits the bill. It's one of those really proactive, great flavor... Uh, it's got this nice, like, forward end touch to it that really elevates you right off the bat from when you take it. Um, it's just a, it's an all-around phenomenal starter and an example for the berry strain. Um, and just, I can't wait for Danny to take it and give his, his views on it right now, too. Uh, as we see here, Danny's also going for the, the bigger torch and... The bigger torch does have its advantages, such as obviously having more flame output, which means it might heat slightly faster. Knowing when your banger is fully hot, you'll see it obviously start to turn a little bit orange, maybe borderline a little bit red, and that's probably approximately when you should stop heating your banger, because you probably hit the around 900, 1000 degree mark on that on that surface at that point. Um, this, will get, this torch will get it there faster, um, and might also allow you a little bit more cool down time on the end to dissipate that gas flavor. The other thing that you want to make sure is if you're getting a brand new banger, there's not going to be any extra residue on there to heat up to red or orange hot. So at that point, you really are just, it's your first test. Just heat it up. I'd say a safe bet is about 45 to 60 seconds. Don't heat it longer than like 120 seconds. You know, don't be heating it for like three minutes. Um, Cause then it will just melt. I mean, it, yep. they won't shatter, they'll melt. Um, and I have had a couple bangers just from repeated use, especially with the propane torch. You'll see a little like indent start to form where it, it's just yep. it's just starting to just barely deform a little bit because of that. So yep. we have a, a nice collection of dabs that are going to be like steadily walked through over the course of the next few episodes. And obviously, we're always picking up more products. So as the connoisseurs of dab that we really are, we're definitely going to be covering every type of strain, every sativa style, every indica style, all of those real big uplifters and euphoric dabs, as well as those sativas that feel like indicas, or things that don't necessarily fall into the standard boxes that you would consider. That being said, we have Danny again going on this berry pie, and I've said this like four times now, just because of how amazing this berry pie actually is. Probably one of my favorite bobsled red box dabs to have come out of them in a, a few months now. Uh, just because of how potent the effect and flavor are when sitting together. And, ooh, yeah, oh my god. <clears throat> Initial thoughts, what do you got for us? <coughs> okay, <coughs> so, when I first take that dab, first of all, I, I do like to say, my favorite strain dab, whatever, of all time, it's cherry pie, so this comes very close in that vein of, like, effect and flavor and everything, but, specifically for this one, it gives a nice tickle to the back of your throat, kind of like a raspberry would give you. There's a, there's a beautiful uh, kind of coupling of every cough that I tended to have. It actually, it, it felt good. Like, it felt like I was getting a little bit more high, and it felt like I was being just very gently pushed from almost, like, just underneath my eyes and, like, kind of the bridge of my nose. It almost pushed into the dab a bit to the point where, again, like you said, the flavor, it just, it rolls so beautifully into this... Uh, kind of uplifted, slightly electrifying sativa effect, but where you get that classic, just along the bridge of your nose, a little bit of sweat, and just like, oh yeah, it's amazing. It's a great sativa. It really is. <coughs> and now, first episode in, I actually have a really special moment for Danny here, because he is he's about to take a dab that he has never seen before. <coughs> this is true, apparently. Uh, because I picked this up yesterday without telling him, and Bitch. I came out to the spot last night, and I forgot all my dabs possibly on on purpose apparently <laughs> because i wanted to wait until the podcast to show him this 
this is an Artifact dab that I picked up recently. Um, and for those of you who don't know about Artifact the company, Artifact's been around for a pretty long time now, but it's pretty scarce, pretty difficult to find, and especially difficult to find at a good price point because of the quality that they put into each and every single one of their dabs. This one right here is TJ's White Label, and if you actually look up TJ's White Label, the strain, TJ's Garden, the farm that produced the strain, has a full breakdown and walkthrough of like a, it's like a full paragraph on their website of all of the strains that they make, and specifically White Label, which is a cross of a couple strains, one of which is El Dorado, and Ooh. that makes this an extremely, extremely high quality product, and Danny, I'm going to hand it to you to give a look in here and God tell me what damn, you think about okay. it. So first of all, right off the bat, this is a very cute packaging. I love the triangle. It's very different <laughs> yeah. from anything else you get. We have, we'll show you a couple other packages, but... Most of the time, you just get a square fucking box, or sometimes they don't even put it in a package and they just leave the puck out. Like, yeah, sometimes you don't even get a box. No, I love this. Uh, they have an amazing kind of uh, information section right here with the total cannabinoids at eighty-five point eight percent. You got the THC at seventy-four point three two. They got CBD at point one seven, which doesn't sound like a lot compared to the other stuff, but CBD usually comes in concentrates of like I, I want to say point zero five. Uh, upwards is when you can actually start to feel it. So mm -hmm. 0.17 is actually not bad. You will get a little bit of a uh, CBD effect on there. Definitely. The, and the white label is interesting to me because white label is actually the name of another brand that we yep. know. Yep. Um, so I'm interested to see, and I've heard, I've like vaguely heard of the El Dorado strain as literally being named like for the city of gold. Like, I'm very interested. Okay, I want to open this up. Honestly, as soon as we start looking at the actual like pa like consistency and when we're getting into this dab itself, you're going to notice right off the bat that that, that color, the City of Gold color that you expect is right there on the top. Ooh. Okay, um, so I always like to show this too. Um, I love places that do oh, this. Yeah. Uh, they'll show the terpene breakdown, the top terpenes. A lot of places will just list the top terpenes or the terpene percentage. This one has a total percentage of 6.97%. Uh, it has beta mycerine uh, at 2.29%, which is interesting because usually this next terpene is on top. A lot of people might recognize this. Beta caryophylline. Uh, it's your uh, pepper strain or your pepper flavor. Also has limonene in there, a little bit of alpha pinene, and some. I've never seen that one. Guaylol, yeah. Guaylol? Guaylol. And so, one of the interesting things about terpenes, and we're definitely going to spend another episode in the future really breaking down what we think of each terpene and things like that uh, as we go forward with this, but one of the things I really enjoy about dabs that don't have that beta caryophylline dominant terpene is that they tend to be really, really different in the flavor department. They tend to offer you something that you don't expect generally when you take the dab for the first time, and this artifact definitely pulls through on that front. And you can see Danny just, uh, he just, just opened the packaging and Jesus. he had a look at the city of gold that was actually in there. And okay, so I hope my webcam will do this one justice. I open this guy up. Um, here, I'm going to hold it up to the webcam. Uh, there we go. <laughs> that is the city of gold right there. Um, Let's see if we can. Yeah, there you go. You can kind of see it's layered up. Here, I'll just describe it to you. It's layered up like sheets in the container. So this almost looks like they pulled it onto a shatter sheet and then maybe broke it up and put it into the container or something like that. But usually that's indicative of, oh, wait, this is a much higher quality. We can sell this at a higher price, so let's put it in the expensive packaging. So, oh, the smell. Oh, my gosh. Have you smelled this yet? I've, I've taken it before. You've so, taken it, you bitch! So, yeah, uh, that's, that, <laughs> that's what I was saying is uh, Danny hasn't tried this one before, and that, thus he has to go first. This is one of the rules of uh, purchasing new dabs within our group, and, of course... Rules amongst the group are one of those things where I think you gotta have, like, a good set of, like, just camaraderie, like, rules, you know? Where it's like, if someone hasn't tried it, they gotta try it first. That's one of our, like, diversity rules, you know? It's like, we need everyone to try everything. Usually the way it works is, you know, we, we like to buy dabs together, we don't always, but, uh, whenever we do buy dabs together, usually the way it works is, you know, you obviously you try yours first, and then you give them out to people who, like... If there's multiple people in the room, for example, I know I'll give out, like, if I think he's going to like a dab over one of my other friends, I'll give him it first, and then it'll kind of go down the line that way. And the same will happen is, like, we'll have, like, a dab buying day, and then we'll yep. just kind of share all that shit. And obviously, like, you've heard this since kindergarten, right? Sharing is caring, but especially when it comes to dabs, and trading one general. for one. Trading one for one is something that's really, really easy to do, because you get a pretty large quantity of a dab when you purchase <laughs> a full gram, and it's generally speaking... 
not super expensive to to trade dabs one for one even if they're of varying qualities because the amount that you take is relatively minimal to get a pretty significant effect and thus like if you really want to show someone what's going on with something in your collection or vice versa if they want to show you what's going on with something in their collection it's both cost efficient it's effective and it's very streamlined so we hear we hear it we have danny uh he's clearing off his piece a little bit sorry um, so, it, because it's so cold, the resin likes to build up in the bottom of my piece. I, yep. I should have cleaned it for today, but it's okay. I, it, I cleaned it like a week ago. It's fine. Um, and we haven't used it that much. So, uh, you can see there's a little bit of uh, resin getting clogged up in the holes down there. Don't worry. It's not going to go into my lungs or anything. That's why it's getting caught in the water and along the side walls and everything. There might be a little bit that gets under your teeth if you don't clean it out enough, and that can get gross, so I would try to so, clean it before then. We definitely recommend cleaning out your bongs at least. Once a week is a good threshold to try and clean out your bongs. I recommend cleaning it out after every session if you can. Uh, I understand that that's kind of rough for some people, which is why a lot of people do like to rotate through pieces, so that way you can, you know, yep. smoke one and then have a cleaning day at the end of the week or something like that. Um, but anyways, what I was just doing is I was doing a little, like, hard suck through this just so I can get some of the resin out of the way there. Because otherwise, uh, again, in this slightly colder weather, uh, it'll just it'll freeze onto there, and when I go to take an actual hit, once it's heated up, it'll block, and I'll get, like, a an all-of-a-sudden dab, whereas I'm trying to control the airflow a little bit when I first take the dab so that it milks, quote-unquote, milks up in this chamber right here so it doesn't hit my throat while I'm still capping. I like to uncap before I take my big, you know, rip all the way through. Uh, what kills a lot of people is they'll get halfway through a dab uh, with dab in their throat and dab still in the piece, and then they'll start coughing. And here's the thing, once you start coughing, you gotta you get can't, through yeah, your you coughing. Cough like before you can finish the dab. It's very difficult to, in the middle of your coughing fit, like, stop finish your dab and then keep going usually what ends up happening is you have to hand it to somebody else back to the artifact uh this stuff is literally the city of gold as danny was saying beforehand but also when it comes down to the flavor it provides such a unique different taste from what you'd expect a dab of that color and consistency to look like especially with beta marcerine as being the first terpene you get a lot more of this really deep citrusy flavor with it and we're about to see Danny's heating the piece and I'm pretty sure that's not what he was expecting but when you actually get down into it this is probably one of the most interesting like, curations of difference in flavor difference in effect something that you'd expect to be even more sativa leaning while it's actually very deeply indica leaning and we're about Ooh. to see Danny go through probably the whole progression of figuring out this dab for the first time and that's going to be a, a really interesting experience let's yeah. Give him a moment here to start from the very beginning. Oh, and you can even get right off the bat the smell. The smell smells so orangey. It smells like almost like you poured a glass of orange juice right in front, like right in front of yourself. It it's really, 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 really straightforward. It's a it's a crazy, crazy different experience from what you'd expect it to be. Danny's at a loss oh my for God. words. Yeah, yeah, no, that. Sorry, usually I have a lot to say after a dab. Um, huh! I don't think I've ever seen this in a while, actually. No, it's been a while, yeah. Danny's usually not at a loss for words for anything. <laughs> but anyway, um, we're about to... You're about to... You're about to just... You're about to understand just exactly how different this this TJ's white label is. And I, this is one of those things where <coughs> I'm pretty hesitant to come out and say right off the bat, like, I recommend this product, like, I'd recommend going back and... Getting, <coughs> but I picked this up for... $12. <laughs> if you see this anywhere near that kind of a price point ever in your life, this TJ's White Label from Artifact, don't even question it. Just go buy it. Just go buy it. It's super worth it. Even if it's like your first time just like getting into dabs and you need something to start with, this is perfect. Uh, okay. If you're an experienced smoker like Danny, you might have... Danny, Danny, Danny might have something to say on that note now. So. Yeah, my God. Uh, I was going to say, like, usually, I, first of all, when I took this... It felt like I didn't take a big enough one, which I, that happens a lot with certain either really good dabs that trick you like that or just dabs where, like, they don't have a whole lot of effect or hit. No, this one has a hit. Um, it's interesting that you mentioned the flavor because, yeah, you're right. It's so deep of a flavor that I almost thought it wasn't there, but yep. it, it kind of rolls across your tongue in a way that no other dab, I think, has for me, at least in a while. Like, I... It's hard for me to think of one that even compares to this in terms of the specificity that it gives you because it is orange, but it's like, it's going to sound weird. It's like if you put like a mandarin orange in your mouth 
and just like rolled it around in there and it like dissolved like oh my god it's it's a it's an amazing flavor and i don't know if you noticed but i usually cough pretty right off the bat with dabs because that's just how the throat tickle works with a lot of them this one's different this one um it it takes a second it settles in it lets you get settled in and then it gives you a little bit of a kick it gives you a little bit of uh i don't want to say uplifting but yeah it almost is uplifting yeah. where it's it's a it's a very it's a very anti indica uplifting where it feels like it's uplifting enough to get you through with the body effects you know where like the body effects like really have time to settle into your body and you don't like immediately fall asleep like a wapa strain or something like that right yeah so it keeps you really engaged with the dab really like still a little bit energized almost at the very front end but then really relaxes the rest of you well and i'll say there are very few that we say this about but i always love it when we get to say it this one takes you for a ride and like. Whenever an experience does that for me, that is an almost immediate, like, it, it becomes one of the highest ranked dabs for me because not a lot of dabs have that depth and complexity to their effect. Like, a lot of them just don't have, they're very one note, let's say, maybe one or two note. They're very, um, they're very classical as opposed to, you know, maybe some modern, you know, hip hop -y type stuff. I don't know. It's, this one, yeah. Exactly. It's a very different different experience for sure we'll have to and see how loud that torch is in post <laughs> yep i'm very curious to find that one out it's usually not that bad or like over discord and stuff so i figured also why not let him hear it yeah let him let him hear you know what that, that is about how loud you know if, if it is that close to the mic it is about how loud it's going to be just e even in conversation uh, i've noticed if you're holding the torch you're usually fine you can hear a lot of things if you're right next to the person doing the torch you can't hear really anything difficult. Uh, if you're one over, you're fine, but there's, like, this weird thing that happens with sound in that torch, yeah. Just the effect of white noise, but that's a that's a whole different issue. Um, we have our audio expert right here. <laughs> he does all the back end. He makes all this shit work. <laughs> quick, I guess this is our quick ad break, right? <laughs> we're, supposed to, we're supposed to shout out our sponsors, but our sponsors are just me. <laughs> because, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Shout out to our sponsor. Yeah, shout uh, out to Zaris Ari Music. Iyer. Yeah, <laughs> follow Honestly, me God, on SoundCloud. <laughs> Zaris Music right now. Um, if, if there is somebody to look out for right now, yeah, go look up Zaris. Um, no, thank you. Uh, I'm also at a loss for words. I don't know what to say. I just took the artifact and it's just, it just takes, it's like a tidal wave. It just takes you away. I, you know, like, I just noticed what I did with my own body language too, because I was like up here trying to be like you know presentative and everything. And in that yeah, moment, just, like, I just like back, kind of yeah. yeah, back here. And, yeah. Yep, yep. It it does. It takes you for a ride. It has, I would say, a very <laughs> uplifting and almost energizing effect towards the beginning. You get a bit of focus <laughs> oh God, and yeah. clear headedness. The cough but, comes so late too. Yeah, I just, I just yeah I just got to the cough and it was just like random. You know, it's like I've like settled into the dab a little bit. Oh, oh wait, it's still here. Mm -hmm. Like it's a big shocker almost. It like pulls you back towards it, which is kind of cool. It's weird because it, yeah, it feels as though you've completely like okay, I'm good now, and then it's like and then <laughs> you're just like yeah oh, oh, yeah, and oh. then you're just not good, okay. and then you're back to honestly like a pretty like pretty leveled blasted state, you know. Like, and I I would say you know some coughs they can be kind of sharp, they can be kind of uh, unpleasant, but this one's a very like like I said, it's a warm, pleasant, welcoming like. It's just part of the experience. Yeah, exactly. And now, honestly, yeah. Yeah, this is this is euphoric, and I would say borderline almost. It, it's getting to be almost psychedelic. Like I and I, I rarely say that about certain dabs, but like I've been looking for red strains and you know other. No, uh, yeah, gold we're about we're because... about like fifty dabs past that last red strain, which is the last one you described as psychedelic. We're mm -hmm. almost like 40, 50 dabs past that now, so. Oh yeah, a little bit of background on that. So uh, the way that we've been keeping ta track of dabs up until this point has been uh, we when we started dabbing, we decided we need to keep track of this. So uh, I I started you know keeping a little journal, just handwritten notes of uh, just how everything felt, what I thought of the taste, and I got kind of creative with it. I would like I would paste, I would tape in the information from the dab. I would cut out like terpene counts and all that, um, and it became this little like scrapbook, almost like a, a journal of just the experiences the taste and it became a database and i basically it was like while i'm describing this i'm gonna let you pick out your next dab yeah uh, because i picked out the last two uh 
yeah, so basically what happened is I, t I took a look at this book. It was like one of those like composition bo notebooks that he was just literally cutting out the labels from each dab and like writing what he thought about it in there. And I was like, we need to make this like a streamlined thing, right? Like it's it's pretty difficult for you to like go find your notebook and like everything or like bring it out here in the rain, you know, when it's like probably going to get destroyed or something like that. So what we did instead is we made a, a form and we started keep tr keeping track of all of our forms in a manual entry database where we could describe each effect each flavor, what the actual specifications, the THC percentages, the companies, the the strains were, and if we ever wanted to compare something going back to what we thought it would be like, we can always go back and look at like our the the dab we were talking about just now was uh, the Willamette Red uh, X Kombucha, and it was by White Label, and it was probably the last dab that had a more psychedelic effect on the on the uh, on the back end, and. The reason we can still remember that, or the reason we can even go back and show people how the like the thing happened, is because we recorded all of these in the database, and the database has been a it's been a huge addition to our ability to just keep track of the stuff we know, keep track of new strains, because a lot of dab companies are big innovators and in trying to create new stuff. Like mm -hmm. the dab that Danny pulled out is a great example of innovation right here. So we're gonna get there in just a second. Yeah. But without like writing all of this stuff down to know about it we're never going to be able to keep track of all the stuff that people come up with. And so, soon, there will be a public version of this database that we all can fill out and contribute to. Hopefully and a link in the description we'll be soon, able to put a you link. know? Exactly, we'll put a link in the description box below for you. And as you guys take all of your dabs, it would be really great if you could fill out the survey, fill out the form, and tell us what you think. Similar to how we're telling you what we think, we're going to keep doing this. We'd love to get your feedback, too. Drop your feedback in the comments. Drop it in the form. Yeah, drop it everywhere, because everybody dabs, needs to learn your, about dabs. G give us a little profile of... Uh, maybe, maybe we'll even, uh, on one of these at some point, we'll we'll do a database entry, and we'll show you kind of how we yeah. like to do it. And then, uh, you know, we'll... Uh, we really want you guys to get involved, because it, this really is, like you said, this is going to be a data collection thing, but this isn't... This isn't for the purposes of, like, we're trying to sell you something or anything. This is because... Like you said, there's nobody else doing this. There, I, may, some of you may be familiar with a website called Leafly or even Weed Maps. Uh, they both do a great job of telling you what products are where, and Leafly does a great job of telling you uh, the history behind some of the strains as input by people who have tried it. Yep. And some of the problem with that is there's no one on the back end putting in everything that they can, at least not that I've seen. There's a few strains that should have been, I, I think personally, should have been in there a while ago, and that aren't. And to go even further than that, there's they aren't doing dabs. They aren't doing concentrates. They aren't doing edibles. They aren't doing uh, vaporizers or anything like that. They have links to all of, you know, the products in your area, and maybe dispensaries will have their own information. Brands all have their own information and way of doing it. But this is a way to kind of standardize for everyone just what we all know and like and appreciate about these dabs and what we all value in them. So, like, not just how much THC is in it, but hearing from as many people as possible, well, how high did it actually get you? How did you feel? How long did you feel it? And what did it taste like? Like, you know, fuck however many terpenes are on there. If they did it a certain way and they can keep it under a certain number of terpenes, that's all the better. Like, Yep. Dab companies are innovators, and this is going to bring us to the next strain that we have here, which is Slap and Tickle Strawberries and Cream. By the way, that is Slap and Tickle crossed with Strawberries and Cream, which that's a lot of crosses to get to where we are right here. Yep. But that's exactly the thing, is dab companies are innovators. They're constantly looking for the exact crosses of strains that'll give you that careful euphoria or that extreme blasted widow experience or something like that, you know? There's a lot of there's a lot of thought and careful breeding and phenotyping that goes into the production of a lot of these dabs. And thus every single batch of product is gonna be different from the last batch of product. And it becomes a constant race a constant struggle to keep up to date with what each product is doing and it becomes really hard for the consumer as well at that point to determine whether or not that product is for them and there's a lot more people who are more willing to deviate and there's some people who are your classic people who come to the people like us and they know what they want they know they want their ogs they know they want their indicas they know they want their cush mints they know they want their specific different headbangers effects, right? yeah like there's and then they're Jack Herrera's, yeah. And then you get these weird in-betweeners, which I think a lot of us become this at some point, where there's a lot of stuff that we just don't know that we might like. 
Exactly. Word. Yeah. But it needs to be written out there for us so we can see it. We're 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 stoners, right? Like we need the info. We can't just we, we need to have it proved use, to us, yeah. right? We need to see it with our own eyes. But more so than that, it would be a lot better if we could hear it from somebody else who's actually tried it and not just. You know. Exactly. I mean, we don't. It's not. It's not about Somebody speculation. Somebody invested right? in the success of some of these things because I think if there's a good dab out there, I want there to be more of that. I want more people to be able to try it. If there's shitty dabs out there, no offense, but you gotta change it. Like you gotta not make those anymore. I don't know. Like there's gotta be some sort of uh, mechanism for change, and I think this is gonna be an amazing one. If uh, if yeah, if we all get on board with it. So yeah. So I'm um, anyway. I'm super excited about the about the future of that and moving forward we'll definitely drop a link in the description box below so that you all can give your input on what dabs you think are the real 10 out of 10 dabs because they are out there and we'll be bringing them to you right here on this channel so well and moving on to our innovation of white label right yeah this is is the company white label this isn't the last app we took was TJ's white label, which is the strain white label. Now we're actually moving on to the company white label, like we were just talking about. So, yeah, this is the brand that I was talking about. Some of you may be familiar with it. Some, oh god, this camera's gonna not let me show this. But yeah, this is the white label box. A lot of them come in white boxes. It's a very popular brand. It's been around for a long time. They've had their ups and downs in quality, uh, at least for my opinion. I think recently they've definitely been in an up, so that's awesome. I, I definitely agree with that assessment. I think White Label has been heavily on the upswing with their higher-end products recently uh, in terms of the things that we think have been really, really, really quality, uh, have been 9.5, 9.6 out of 10, very solid product. And this one is, you're about to find out, this one is exactly the same. This one's and pretty fucking good. I believe it's to me, right? It's to you. It's all awesome. you. So yeah, please. Uh, shall we? Shall we get in there? I feel so. Tell us. Tell us a little about it. I you know. Tell this us is... what you're noticing. Yeah. So like right off the bat here, we're like, it's really sugary. It's like a bunch of little like crystal esque things. Um, doesn't really break apart super easily or super hard. Like I kind of have to just like press into it and I kind of get the amount that I want over here. Um, not super difficult to deal with actually compared to what I originally thought. Um. Here, I'll talk about the box yeah. if you want. Um, I'm going to heat it up, so... Yes, yeah, so while he's heating, uh, I'll tell you about it. So, White Label does a great job. Uh, this is one of the things I've always loved about their brand is even, no matter what dips they've had in quality, their uh, information on the box has always been phenomenal. They've always had a great spread of uh, total cannabinoids, total terpenes. Uh, they give you a good top three terpenes and their percentages. Um, actually, they give you top four in this one. I don't know if they always do that, but yeah, they give you a a decent amount of information, not to mention uh, they give you a little QR code and a little barcode. I think at least one of those is to go look up like the exact profile of this as well. So they do some really good testing, uh, as well as, like Ari said, they just consistency wise recently, you can get a really, really top tier dab uh, for honestly not that bad of a price. So, like, we got this one, this is marketed for 16 bucks. Uh, pretty, it's actually more expensive than uh, the artifact, which know how it compares in quality but i you know for 16 bucks you can get some pretty crappy dabs and this one does not hit that at all this one's pretty good so uh, i'm really happy with it it does say that it's uh, a hybrid which is kind of weird um i don't know if i'd call this a hybrid but we'll see how we feel about that this is that consistency he was talking about very sugary it almost looks like oh i even dropped a, a crystal it looks uh Honestly, God, kind of like powdered sugar or actual sugar. I can actually pick it up with my fingers without wetting them, which is interesting. A lot of dabs are so sticky that they'll, you know, gum up your fingers and you won't be able to get them off. It's not diamonds, but it's definitely, yeah. It's a little close to diamonds. It actually, it really has that, like, not quite, like, it has that, like, that flavor you search for that you kind of, like, attribute to diamonds. Diamonds are, generally speaking, they're significantly higher in THC and significantly lower in flavor. Uh... But a lot of times, these, like, diamond-esque products that come pretty close to that consistency of being, like, really dark, like, put-together, like, dense crumbles or, like, sugar waxes end up being, like, close in that flavor department of not quite lacking in flavor, but they leave you searching for the flavor. Mm -hmm. And once you find it, there's a good strawberries, a little bit creamy flavor in there, especially on the back end, but you really have to go digging through... Uh, if you take it a little bit too hot, for example, you might lose that flavor on this one. 
Oh, and that's a big thing, too. Yeah, so uh, that's kind of goes in, you know, back to when you're heating up your nail, you're going to find what works best for you. Um, you know, obviously, there's there's recommendations. Everyone will give you a recommendation. I give you a bunch of recommendations. But you got to find what works best for heating your own dabs. As long as you're not doing it in a dangerous way, that it works. Like, just find what works for you. Yep. Uh, and like you said, if yeah, this is one of those where if you heat it a little bit too hot, it'll just flash up and you'll lose probably all a of that A lot of flavor. the flavor, yeah. Um, and it, it's not that that's necessarily a, a problem. It's more so that that just happens to be one of those consistencies that really you have to be v- vigilant about maintaining that low temp hit because you'll get the best experience from it. And the best experience is an extremely high quality experience where you're going to be like pushed. It's an uplifting. Uh, it honestly makes it just difficult to to talk like i'm i'm struggling with putting the sentences together as a whole that's good so that's good that, that by the way like that real, is high praise sativa. literal high praise yeah. um <laughs> that's high praise from a high man uh <laughs> no but <laughs> um no but in all honesty if, if a dad can make us shut up that's a pretty impressive feat because we are pretty able to get through a lot of our smoking sessions by just fucking rambling back and forth at each other yeah um we do like to have music on every once in a while i like to take dabs to songs uh so you know, definitely don't... expect some of our favorite tunes on here in the future um it's gonna be some some, some funny shit that happens with music on here if we yep. do it on here but yeah and definitely uh, there's gonna be some times in this podcast where maybe we just stop being serious and maybe you know just enjoy ourselves for a bit oh yeah definitely and let and you enjoy things, because there's things that you deserve to enjoy, too. Yep. The discussion of fun things and weed go hand in hand, so expect expect everything and expect nothing, you know? Like like we said, tangents are the key yep. to this. So be prepared to dive into the unknown realms of everything, from electronic music to random thoughts about Star Trek to yeah. uh, who knows what's next. Don't even get me started. I started watching Star Trek Discovery recently. I'm a huge Trek Don't nerd. get started. Yeah, you can't. I watched Danny, everything. You can't get started. You're not allowed to get started. That's not. That's not allowed. I'm so scared. Yeah, you're not allowed. Uh, we'll get into that next time. You know. Uh, maybe next maybe not. Yeah, Probably maybe not. not. Uh, too many people already talking about it. That's not allowed. Uh, drop your favorite uh, Star Trek innuendo in the comments below, uh, or don't, because if you don't, then Danny won't talk about it next time. So that would actually probably be better for me. You know. So. Do it or don't, you know? Uh, but you clearly know where both of us stand on either half of this uh, this debate. Um, we see Danny's also going in for the slap and tickle strawberries and cream over here. Yeah, which... so we, we've we just been following each other back and forth on dabs here. Um, we don't always do that. A lot of times we like to split off and kind of take our own little, you know, journeys. But it's kind of yeah, fun to, you know. It is. I'd say generally speaking, each time we'd probably take around three dabs and look at three dabs and know what we think of those three dabs a week um, on this podcast. Mm. I think today, I'm feeling a little bit special. We brought this artifact in. Let's go for a fourth one. Yeah, I I said let's do it. Yeah. Do you want to... I want you to give your final thoughts on this uh, white label first, actually. Oh, shit, that's great. This is one of those ones that, yeah, it just shuts you up, right? So... So I will say, this is one of the few where I took it, and all of a sudden, I got hungry, and I have snacks in my pocket for after the podcast, but I almost pulled them out to eat, because that's how, like, munchies I got. Um, it definitely just gives you this, like, gives your brain a lot to work on. Um, it doesn't make you any slower, I think, in reaction time or anything like that, but it does... <coughs> it just slaps you up. <laughs> <laughs> and I think, uh... The, the proof is in the pudding, right? Like, you just, you, you see what's going on right in front of you, so. Uh, it definitely holds on a little bit to that, um, it has a little bit of an aggressive hold on your lungs, for sure, compared to other ones, but, uh, it has that candy sweetness and that, like, almost dance yep. across, uh, your tongue and your forehead in terms of effect that, uh, I don't know, it just ends up being a very pleasant... This one's definitely electrifying compared to maybe a different sativa that we've taken, but... I definitely agree with that statement. Oh, it's electrifying in a way that, you, like you said, you just... It almost makes you not want to talk, which, uh, that's not... <laughs> that's not great for this. <laughs> that's why we got it out of the way. Now, right? <coughs> when we have other stuff to talk about. Exactly. Yep. 
so we got a few options. Danny, what are you feeling? Are you feeling leaning more sativa? Are you leaning more indica? Like, what are you what are you trying to go for right now? Well, let's see. What was that white label technically? Was that an indica or sativa? This one? Uh, that the artifact. Oh, white the artifact. Label. Yeah. Oh, the artifact. <laughs> See, oh, damn it. and this is exactly why you need a database to keep track of all your stuff, because this shit's way too fucking confusing, man. Yeah. Like, it's actually, like, how else are you supposed to keep track People of it? People like, will name their shit anything. They'll name it Unicorn Sparkle Fart, and they'll be like, yeah, that's just, like, OG and, like, Pineapple. It's like, what? Yeah, you have no idea how you got that, so. <laughs> keep track of all your crosses, guys. Just, 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 just keep track of all your crosses. At the very least, for yourself, you should keep track of it, because... It's nice to know what you like, and honestly, as a stoner, sometimes you take a dab, and you're like, wow, and that was absolute crap, and you take it with a bunch of other stuff, and then later on when you're buying stuff, you accidentally buy that crappy dab because it was amongst a bunch of good ones. Alright, you know like... what we're gonna do? Danny, I would like you to avert your eyes from your collection for a moment, okay. such that I can put another... Actually, I'm just gonna put a... Ran... I know what... Uh, yeah. So, there's a dab in my right hand, and it represents a different dab from what it actually is, and there's a dab in my left hand. I'm gonna, like, swap around my hands, you know, do the weird thing where I, okay. like, put all of them and mix it up, and you're either going to take... One of them is from my collection, and one of them is from your collection. You're either going to take the one that is in my hand if it is from my collection, or you're going to take a dab of my choice from your collection if it is the dab from your collection. Okay, okay. Does that make sense? Yeah. Alright. Would you like... There are two dabs in my hands. Mm. Uh, let's see. Both of them are on camera. Yeah. I'd like you to pick. I'm going to pick that one. So, the dab you've chosen is mine. Okay. It's a triple chocolate chip. So that means I'm taking that one, right? Yep. All right. And, oh, this, this is, is a, a special one. This is one. so good. Oh, so. my God. I'm glad that I landed on it. I saw him pull out. I could see the purple of the packaging in his hand when he pulled it up. And I think he pulled out uh, the, I've same out the same brand from mine, from so I, one, I wouldn't so be able be to tell. Even. That's a good idea. Yep. Um... <laughs> Yeah, this step. <coughs> I'm so coughing from the last one. Here, Excuse me, I'm slightly sick. <coughs> yeah, so... Alright, so we got this triple chocolate chip. We pulled this one out. Um, the, the cool thing about this one <coughs> is... It's... Technically, like, not one strain. And it's technically not what the strain normally is. So chocolate is normally supposed to be a sativa-leaning hybrid. Mm -hmm. uh, this triple chocolate chip is an indica. And it's a full-spectrum live rosin. And basically what that means is instead of being extracted, it's pressed. And we'll get into the differences between extraction, pressing, and the different forms of being able to procure your dabs uh, later on. Because that it's a whole different can of worms, and Danny yeah. can attest to that one. We can get into there We'll do a whole podcast episode on that one at some point. Because and, yeah. it's really fun talking about how different dabs are curated. But... Rosins generally tend to give you the most thorough, authentic flavor, <laughs> especially Forte Rosins. This company is Decibel Forte, and they have some of the cleanest tasting rosins in the industry right now, in my opinion. Definitely up there amongst the best yeah. of the best in terms of their quality, in terms of their flavor and effect. So, this triple chocolate tastes very much like chocolate, on top of also being this, like, super, super like, hunger-inducing, breathy, full-spectrum indica. Yeah, I would totally agree, and, uh... Hmm. I would also just add to that, yeah, it's... When it says triple chocolate, what it's triple chocolate chip, right? It's triple chocolate chip. So, okay, that implies that it's, like, a cookie. It, it tastes like it's, like, a triple chocolate chip cookie. Like, it tastes like there's several different layers. Yep. There's... The cakiness in there is very minimal. It just kind of holds it together. Uh, and other than that, yeah, there's like three layers of solid chocolate in there that you get. And it tastes phenomenal. You get this really kind of almost wood-like, I would say akin to like oak or maple in terms of like if you've ever had like oak, oak or maple like sawdust around. Like, oh, that smell yep. compared with, yeah, just this rich chocolate and... It almost has a freshness that comes in, like, a pack of gum, which sounds weird, but, like, I don't know. It just... That's, like, one of the big things about dabs is you get, like, a large amount of variance on the smell and the taste front through a lot of these. And rosin really exemplifies that, uh, especially compared to a lot of other extraction methods. Um, just the clean, the clean pressing of the cannabis oils just makes it 
such that the flavor really comes through in the most organic, just perfect way. And, and I, I do have to say, so this rosin in particular, when he says, like, this tastes amazing, I know I said don't pay attention to um, percentages too much, but just to give you an idea, there, you know, the number of terpenes, I would say the more that you have in there, the more potential you have for a great flavor. Rosins <laughs> usually cap out, I think, at around, like, 6 to 8 percent like yeah i'd say the averages for rosin are generally between five and seven percent it's and like eight percent is generally a little bit on the usually the numbers for rosin in general are just a little bit lower on, like yeah. uh, and to give you an idea for how good this one seems to be uh the terpene count on this is 13 percent that's one three percent um mm -hmm. which is ridiculous i mean that's higher than a lot of the other resins that we have and those are specifically designed to have a high terpene count Obviously, you can go crazy. There are some out there. I think one of our buddies has one with thirty percent terpenes. Like that's thirty. That is ridiculous. That's 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 the same number of terpenes as it's would some... be THC in a lot of flowers. Like yeah. that's, yeah. So, but uh, no, this There's is some crazy this... stuff that can happen there. But... Like I said, numbers don't matter in that way too much because this one tastes phenomenal with thirteen percent terpenes, and the effect is nothing to scoff at. I mean. And it this, is quite good. While Danny's heating, this really ties into, like, this discussion about decibel and the, like, quality, because I think that whenever we're taking a decibel of rosin, I bring this point up almost every Forte. single time. Forte rosin. Yeah, Forte rosin. If you don't know, decibel is the company that oversees yeah. and then makes Forte. Yeah, exactly. So, I'll specify, uh, you're correct, decibel Forte. Um, the, the Forte rosins just have such a high quality point uh, across the board. And this is something I bring up every time, because I try and pick one up almost every time I go in to purchase product. And almost every single time, they have something slightly different. Almost every single time, they have something that is pushing the boundaries of its flavor in the way they decide to go. And in my personal opinion, every time you see something different, especially at a low, good price point like they tend to put them out at, uh, they're very, very high quality. And for having such a good taste and effect on a Ross, and for having such <laughs> randomly high numbers, too, in terms of the 13% the turfs, a lot of them have, like, 10 to 13% turfs, you can tell and that they're really, like, carefully crafted on top of... Yeah, the taste and effect definitely back it up. You can tell they're really carefully crafted to be the exact effect that they're going for. And that standard of quality control is almost unmatched in the cannabis industry currently so just want to give a big shout out to decibel on that front because decibel forte has been one of in my opinion one of my favorite product lines since maybe disco a couple of years ago and here we have i will say have it. before i say anything about this uh, in the same vein bose nose nose out cold their line of out cold rosins i think are in the same vein but you know i agree i absolutely agree um but yeah, no, this one, okay, so let's talk about this. This rosin is phenomenal. I don't know if you noticed, but I'm not coughing. It's super smooth. It's unbelievably smooth. Like, it, and like I said, the taste just, it lingers on every part of your mouth, even if you have a little bit of cotton mouth, which it doesn't give you. It keeps you uplifted. It keeps you, like, going while still giving you this deep, I think really layered indica effect that just, like, oh, it's... Yeah, it, it slaps you up and down uh, in a very gentle way. It's like it's like a feather dust slap, I guess. Uh, yep. And I I have a feeling this is if I remember this correctly, it just kind of keeps raising as well. That's one of the great things about dabs is a lot of these, you know, we'll, we'll say it has these effects in the moment, and then we'll keep feeling the effects of those dabs throughout the other dabs that we take throughout the session, or yeah, even literally for hours notice. afterwards. That's one of the great things about, you know, weed in general, and dabs specifically. They give you not only a longer duration, but a lot of times you can just tell when the duration is. You can tell about how long it is, and the best part is when it ends. You can tell when you're not high off a dab, which I personally I had a hard time doing when I was smoking flour, and with edibles, it's you're just high till you go to sleep for a lot of them. Yeah. Like, Maybe that's the way I took edibles, but... Well, I definitely I definitely have a very similar experience with dabs specifically, where it's it's a very noticeable period of time where you feel the effects of it, and it's a smooth up come. It's a smooth come down. Uh, the effects are very smooth. They don't feel extremely 
brutally overwhelming after the first few times you take a, take a couple dabs. Yeah, that's you should after, always be careful yeah. about when you take dabs for the first time. Of course, you should always be a little bit careful. You're gonna about be smaller the first time, and You're, yeah, that's that's great. Um, it's just a it's a very it's a very clean overall experience, which is what we started off the day talking about. And mm-hmm. to this word now, this is gonna be our fourth dab of the podcast, and. The experience is clean as ever. It's amazing. Like, I, I'm, I don't know. I, I feel like I could go do some very creative things, which honestly for me is probably going to be editing this, but, uh, yeah, or like, I, I tend to take dabs and write a lot of music. Write music, we, uh, we like playing video games together, you know, uh, but more than that, like, I could go on a hike right now. It's raining out, so I'm probably not going to do that because that's dumb, but, um, no, I mean, we, we come hike down here just to get here and... I, I feel like what people don't get a lot of the times when they hear concentrated cannabis is they, they assume it means, oh, well, you're just going to be, you know, out on the couch. You're going to be yeah, fucking like so dead. high you you're can't gonna move be, or something. You're going to be asleep at some point. Like, yeah, you'll fall asleep if you take too much. But, but we're out if here you committed to yourself. Yeah, we're yeah. out here committed to bringing you this podcast every week. you you got to pace yourself. you got to know your tolerance. And... Just be responsible at any point. Like, don't drive yes. if you're too high, obviously. But at the same time, like, don't you don't have to wait for three hours after you smoke or something like that, necessarily. Maybe you do if, you know, you smoke a bunch or if you took a bunch of edibles. But, again, that's, that's an in-the-moment decision, and it's really quite easy, even when you're high, even when you think you're too high, to make a good judgment call on just... Okay, you know what? I'm high. Like, let me just enjoy being high and not deal with, you know, the stress of maybe I am too high to drive. You know, maybe I am too high to do this thing. (laughs) Do what's comfortable for you while you're high, but don't be afraid to push that a little bit, you know, to to safety's end. Don't do anything illegal. Don't do anything stupid. But make those decisions for yourself. Really experience it for yourself and see see what you're capable of because it. I find that, you know, it makes a lot of things more enjoyable – it makes um, makes a lot of things bearable that wouldn't be normally. Yeah, absolutely. And I just I think the biggest thing for me is like you can really definitely use weed. You can use dabs to create an enjoyable experience for yourself, while additionally doing healthy and beneficial things for yourself. On top of that, for yeah. example, like the hiking point that you brought up. And I extremely obviously stress not doing anything illegal. Like, please don't throw your, like, your weed butts if they're not diet oh, biodegradable. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even yeah. if they are biodegradable, like, please keep them be with you. Don't litter. Be respectful wherever like, you go. Yeah, be respectful. Like, don't break any laws, you know? But, like, I generally tend to think that stoners as a whole, we're, very, we're a very cautious group of people, especially when we're high. And we should use that, like, inhibition to go do things that we enjoy and have fun and be... Be responsible, good, caring, loving individuals, right? Absolutely. Absolutely. And I think, like you said, everyone out there who has smoked weed for a little bit and who knows a little bit more about the culture than maybe what a lot of the people who have the stigmas would normally assume, I think we're all on the (laughs) same page about that. I think we're all on the same page about, yeah, just be respectful. Keep keep spreading that vibe of respect and love to everyone because that's what it's all about. And that's... There's no way to argue with that in the end, right? Like, there's Exactly. And if you're responsible, there's no way to argue with you either. Exactly. Right? Like, if you're a safe, responsible individual and you bring other people this in a safe, responsible, great way, then you can be potentially that, like, you can have that experience in any situation you would like. Yeah. Uh, I Just to name a couple other ones, too. If, uh, if This is going to be a weird one because apparently this one isn't super legal. If you're uh, experienced enough with driving a boat, uh, going out on a boat and fishing while you're high is an amazing experience. I've heard a lot of fishermen who love to do that. Um, I've heard... Uh, yeah, or find someone else to drive the boat for you. If you have a private track in your backyard and you have you know, maybe a low-power go-kart or... Uh, I have a scooter. I have an electric scooter. I love cruising on the scooter because... Again, it's a low risk activity. You can go mm-hmm. bike riding. You can fucking oh, bike yep. riding is a bike, great one. Is great. Like g- any type of working out is just phenomenal. Don't hurt yourself, obviously, but I don't think you will. It'll just it'll make it all more enjoyable. Like go to the gym because I, I always compare it to you know if you were to get drunk and do some of the things you try to do while you're high. <laughs> it'd be pretty. Di- it would be pretty difficult. It would be pretty damn difficult some of the time. But like it would yeah. be pretty difficult. Thank you guys so much for watching episode one of 
I don't even remember what podcast I don't remember what is. I fucking called this at the beginning. I don't know. I'll flash it up on the screen because I'm... <laughs> um, it's right here. That's what it's called. And you're not allowed to um, say that, Danny. Oh, no. I'll censor myself. It's fine. That's the only thing you're not allowed to say, Danny. <laughs> Alright, anyhow. Oh, we get to cut that out. <laughs> it's fine. It'll give you something to do. I know, I know. They won't know. They won't know what the word is. Or will they? Quick, cut the feed! And he's in.